previously on Second Fiddles. From the beginning, I, MacGuffin, have discussed the threat coming to Earth that the late deer hero, the Stag, was meant to face. The Stag was given powers and sentience and transported through time by a mysterious alien race and stationed in Rose City to defend against the threat. However, with the aid of my daughter, Sally, rest in peace, princess, we killed the stag, who passed on his mission to his sidekick. Maxim Loft, otherwise known as Buck, is a rather pitiful excuse for a sidekick and a human. There's no way he and his team of misfit heroes can defeat me and the plot, my armored tank, let alone the threat. <sighs> However, I am curious how this will play out. <laughs> Let's begin. Episode 42, The Threat. This episode contains gun violence, sci-fi violence, as well as the discussion of death and genocide. Hi, Mom. Sorry if this journal entry ends up being way longer than usual. We just fought a battle for the fate of the planet, and it was crazy. Unfortunately, not all of us made it out unscathed. I mean, I'm obviously okay, but some of the others weren't so lucky. I'll tell you about that later. Damn, where to begin? Well, with everything going on, we needed someone to help coordinate, be our eyes in the sky. Do you remember my friend Gail from the Academy? The one with the tail? She used her powers to fly to a vantage point and was running comms. Hey, can everyone hear me okay? This is Pitch. All of us on the ground can hear you, loud and clear. Great. Buck, you there? Yeah, we're both invisible and ready to sneak onto the ship. Great. I can see what looks like a command center in the center of the ship. Uh, Buck, it, it looks like that gangway in the middle leads directly there. 10-4. We'll be quick. Does everyone have their new earpieces in? How else would we be hearing you? I don't know. I've never done this before. I just want to make sure everyone's hearing is protected. And just so we're clear, if my voice breaks your ears, you knew what you were signing up for. Noted. Pitch, I see the army. They're preparing to disembark. Everyone, get ready. So, while Gail was directing us from above, reinforcements were called in to assist on the ground. Everyone played their part, including Sophia's sister, Frankie. We need to weaken their army. Retcon, are you in position? Yeah, recall. I'll do what I can to hold them off. I'll make them forget how to use their weapons. They'll be like little alien stormtroopers. They'll never hit their targets. No, there's too much chance of collateral damage. Okay, how about I make them forget their own language? That could cause chaos. Well, what would you suggest? Can you make them remove their helmets and body armor? I could make them remember being extremely claustrophobic or make them think taking them off will keep them safe. Does that sound good? Yes, thank you. I got your back, sis. Thank you, and good luck. Right back at ya. Oh, wait, sorry. I jumped too far ahead. So when the Threat's ship arrived over Rose City, they just hovered. No flashing lights, no noise. We tried hailing them, but they were incommunicado. Oh, sorry for the tangent, but I'm capitalizing the word threat because that's what they call themselves. The name of the threat is the threat. Hey, at least it's accurate. They didn't call themselves the party or the relaxation, so we can never say they weren't upfront about their intentions. Anyway, after almost an hour of creepy silence, the ship opened up like a blooming onion, and an army of aliens poured out into the city streets. It was insane. People running for their lives, buildings and cars being destroyed, blah, blah, blah. There was carnage everywhere. We knew we needed to act fast. There were five heroes positioned around the ship, each using their powers to keep the army at bay. One of them was Retcon, making the threat within range take off their body armor. After that, it was up to Pitch, Recall, and Krampus, and positioned on the outskirts with a megaphone was Lullaby, in case anyone was able to get past the others. I'm freaking out, guys. Are you sure those earpieces will prevent you from falling asleep if I sing? 
Yes, Recall told me they'll work, and she's never wrong. I wouldn't say never, but yes, Lullaby, rest assured, we will be unaffected. Okay, okay. Are the aliens coming? I can see them now. I'm muting my comms. I'll be able to hear you, but I won't blow out your ears. Good luck, mother first. Oh my god, why did I agree to this? I believe in you, Lullaby, and I'll do all I can to keep you safe. Thanks, Recall. They're approaching, so I'm going to transform. Krampus, if I get out of control, you know what to do. Got it. I'll relax your body until you change back to yourself. Krampus, can you see them yet? I can hear them, but I can't see them. Are you ready? Yeah, I've been training a lot lately. I'll keep throwing tension into their muscles until their whole bodies cramp. They'll barely be able to crawl, let alone fight. And if that doesn't work? Then I'll relax them so much that they turn into noodles. Either way, they won't get past me. I see them. Oh my god, there are so many. This is not what I signed up for. Okay, let's do th Krampus, are you okay? Krampus! Recall, if you can check on Krampus. Recall not here. Basher here. Smash and crash. Basher, check on Krampus if you can. Me bashing threat skulls. No time. Die, baddies. Die. Gail, how is everyone doing? Krampus is still standing. He was shot in the shoulder, but he's wiping them out by the hundreds. There are piles of writhing bodies everywhere. I think they're pooping themselves. Gross. And the others? Retcon staying hidden. It's working. They're all taking off their helmets and running into Pitch and Basher. They're dropping like coal balls to a fireball. I don't get that reference. Is it good? Yes. OK, great. Lullaby, one slipped by, a big one. It's the size of a bugbear. I don't know what that means. It's coming right for you. I see it. Holy sh Lullaby, use your megaphone and sing. Sing. OK, here goes. Go to sleep, vicious threat. You are ugly and creepy. Go to sleep, don't kill me. I really want to live. Oh, f So, everything seemed to be working. Frankie and Nick weakened the threat. Sophia, as Basher, and Tammy kicked their alien butts, and Ren held the line. The rest of us were in position. It was all going according to plan, until Dad showed up, in his tank, driving the plot. Ren was almost decimated with a guided missile, but at the last minute, that vigilante wall crawler guy came out of nowhere and pulled her out of the way. Lullaby, are you okay? I am, yeah. Where did you come from? Nearby. It's a good thing I was keeping an eye on you. Creepy, but thanks. Sh I lost my megaphone. That doesn't matter. I think the aliens changed tactics. They stopped fanning out, and they're sticking close to the ship. Besides, we need to focus on the plot. Crap, you're right. My powers can't do anything against a tank. Neither can mine, but... But I have an idea. What are you doing? Stop waving your arms like that. He'll see you. That's the plan. How dare you show your face here, you vigilante scum. Why wouldn't I? I have a really nice face. You killed my daughter, and now you have the gall to get between me and world domination? You're dead, wall crawler. You're dead. I don't f***ing crawl, you piece of sh. I will blast you to hell. What are you doing? I'll keep distracting him. Now run! Karen? Karen! What's going on? Cassie, no! What are you doing? I said to stay home. How did you get here? I was in my room and I felt this weird pulling sensation and I think I just teleported here. Well, unteleport. You know I can't control it. Oh my god, this is a disaster! Prepare to die! Ah! Why are the missiles just floating in front of us like this? How are we not dead? I think it's... me. It's my power. Her power's adaptive survival. It's based on need. We needed her, and she came. 
It's you. You're the girl I saw in my visions. The one who my Sally was supposed to kill. Who are you? Ha! I'm new to the superhero business, but you can call me... Deus Ex Machina. Well, that's a little on the nose, isn't it? Stay away from me, and stay away from my sister. Stop using telekinesis, little girl, and give me back my missiles. You want your missiles back? Here you go! Cassie! Did you just blow up the tank with its own missiles? Oh my god, is he dead? No, he jumped out. <coughs> Do you know what you've done, little girl? Do you know what you've done to my beloved tank? It looks like a deus ex machina has destroyed the plot, which I think we can all agree is fitting. Heck yeah. F*** this. I have bigger fish to fry. See you later, suckers. Where'd he go? <coughs> I can't see. There's too much smoke. <coughs> we can't let him get away. They tried to find him, but Dad's slippery. He got away. And Ren, Cassie, and the vigilante worked together to fend off the alien stragglers. You're probably wondering what the rest of us were doing. Well, Elijah and Max were invisibly working their way to the Threat's command center to cripple the planetary assault. I really don't know if diplomacy is going to help in a situation like this. You liked this plan a few minutes ago. I know, I know. Are you ready? Remember, after you let go of my hand and their leader can see you, there's no going back. I understand. Just be careful, all right? You know me, I'm super careful. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do this. What, no kiss for good luck? You wish. Break a leg. You too. <sighs> Greetings, Threat. I'm here on behalf of Earth to discuss our complete and unconditional surrender. How dare you infiltrate our ship, human? I know, I know. I'm sorry for sneaking, but please just let me speak, okay? We don't care for surrender. We like a good fight. Hey, I'm not surprised. Your army has so much to be jealous of. Humans have so many weaknesses, and it doesn't look like the threat have any vulnerabilities. We are mighty. We are the threat. We don't know the meaning of weakness. Good to know. Anyway, wouldn't Earth be so much easier to dominate if we weren't, you know, fighting back? We can easily combat you enhanced humans. Our technology can reverse your superpowers. All I have to do is set my blaster to single out the genetic mutation in your paltry human DNA, and you're no longer a threat to the threat. That's amazing! Can I see? Very well. No! Watch out! Ah, no, ID! Why did you do that? I... I had to save you. Well, that was a heroically stupid thing to do. This wasn't part of the plan. I feel... funny. It's because you're visible now. I can see you. We can all see you. Your pathetic human mutations are useless against us. You shot him, you stupid f***ing sh for brains. Technically, we shot at you. He was foolish enough to jump in the way. It doesn't matter, because you're next. Ugh. No! <laughs> My vision has come to pass. Thank you, Threat, for rendering this antlered fool useless for me. Now there's no way he can defeat us. You are welcome. Thank you for serving us this planet on a silver platter. I may have hit a little speed bump along the way and lost the plot, but I'm here now and ready to finish this. MacGuffin, you're never going to win. Oh, is that right? I was never one for hunting, but I wouldn't be against mounting your antlers on my wall. Hey, no need for guns. We can talk this out. Meh, you talk too much. No, stop! And one more for good measure. And maybe one more. And another one. Perhaps another? What have you done? 
<laughs> oh, what, are you upset that I've murdered your boyfriend in cold blood? Well, actually the blood is still pretty hot when it starts flowing, so I wouldn't say it was in cold blood, but you get the point. You're a monster. Eh, I've been called worse. Like what? A giant f***ing What? How are you still alive? The blast from the threat's weapon should have neutralized your regeneration power. Well, too f***ing bad. I'm not bleeding anymore, and the only holes I have in my body are the ones that are supposed to be there. But our technology is infallible. There's no way your human DNA resisted the blast. Oh, well, that's pretty easy to explain. It didn't work because... I'm not human, dipsh**. No, we destroyed your toilet, you chromin heathen. Fine with that, but I'm not cool with you ganking my friend's powers. <laughs> wow, that dumb really can't take a punch. I don't understand. I saw this. I saw myself shooting Buck. Don't be too hard on yourself. I'm the most method actor to ever method act. Not really. You were swearing way too much to be a good Max. You, non invisid dude, you're the one who didn't follow the plan. What was I supposed to do? Let him shoot you? Well, you better hope the effects are temporary because seeing you is really f***ing weird. Other than that, do you feel okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm a little disoriented. I have a headache, but that's it. No, well, that's not terrible. Why are you two talking about this as if I'm not still standing here with a gun? Because you can't hurt us, stupid. Yeah, dumb Excuse me? Yeah, Dad, there's no way you're breaking out of this force field. You're finished. Son, where the hell did you come from? I've been here the whole time. I can make myself invisible with my force fields now. And I've been able to mask myself from your clairvoyance since I was a teenager. Why would you ever want to hide from me, son? Who wants their dad to see them jerking off? F you are dense. Ew, chameleon. Don't talk to my dad about that. I like how you're not saying I'm wrong. Whatever, yes, I wanted privacy. That's not the point. I'm confused. If Buck was really chameleon this whole time, where's the real Buck? I'm right here. Max, you're okay. I am, yeah. And you're, you're... Visible? Yeah, that. Are you, are you hurt? I'm fine. <sighs> Good. And the threat? Did you learn their weakness? Oh, yeah, I already did it. Seriously? <laughs> You're gonna love this. I'm still confused. Wh what were you doing this whole time? So, Max explained that while Chameleon posed as him and snuck into the command center with Elijah, I was with the real Max, who was also invisible in my force field. We knew from Plunger that the threat had a vital weakness, but we didn't know what. Max recently learned that his animal telepathy can be used to communicate with aliens. So, while Fake Buck was killing time with a story about surrendering Earth, Max had already tuned in to the threat's thoughts. So, when Chameleon said, Humans have so many weaknesses, and it doesn't look like the threat have any vulnerabilities. We are mighty. We are the threat. We don't know the meaning of weakness. Max read the threat's mind and learned what their weakness was. We originally thought that the lone alien in the Threat Command Center was their leader, but we were wrong. She was just the pilot, and more importantly, a drone. The Threat apparently functioned as a hive mind. That's why the pilot kept referring to herself in the plural. We don't care for surrender. We like a good fight. Max discovered their queen hidden in a deep guarded vault beyond the Command Center. He used his telepathy to identify and mimic her thought frequency like impersonating someone's voice. He commanded all the threat to cease fire and return to the ship. You probably have questions, and believe me, Dad had a million questions too, like... Was that their weakness? The hive mind? No, that was just a handy way to bring them all back to the ship. So, what? Are you sending them back out into the universe? Uh, no. They've already committed genocide on multiple species across the universe. It's not in your character to kill, Buck. I know I'm the narrator. You're too weak. You're right. That's not something I'm willing to do. Not wanting to kill isn't a weakness, MacGuffin. It's a strength. 
Aw, thanks, Boo. But I'm kind of in exposition mode right now, okay? Oh, right. Love you. Love you, too. Oh, God, you're so handsome. I can't believe everyone else can see it now, too. You're going off topic. But yeah, I I'd hit it. Have you seen the way your ears stick out a little? It's so cute. You're making me blush. Oh, and I can see it now, too. Anyway, if you didn't kill the queen, what did you do? Wouldn't you like to know? And, well, Max did finally explain. I'd give you the details, but honestly, when he was telling us, I was distracted by the threat drone's body. They're like giant bipedal insect people. And even with exoskeletons, they still wear armor. Weirdly redundant. Anyway, their weakness has to do with temperature. After all of them returned to the ship, Max essentially adjusted their thermostat, and they couldn't stop from entering a sort of... hibernation. They're not dead, but they're not fully alive, either. Rather than committing genocide, the government decided to keep them on ice for the time being. Oh, and I should probably mention the revelation that Max had when we were done. I don't think the stag was ever meant to do this, Max. I think you were. How do you figure? The stag's powers didn't fix this. Yours did. Really? I guess you're right. I mean, without the regeneration and laser vision, I may have been killed by the dairy fairy last year. You're allowed to brag a little, you know. But this really was a team effort. You're the one who discovered the key to defeating them, though. Yeah, but without Chameleon showing me I could telepathically connect with aliens, this would have been impossible. Technically, Baby Stevie is the one who helped you with that. Yeah, but Kim adopted them, and it was their idea to try it. You're never going to take credit for this, are you? Nope. Ugh. Those ancient, time-traveling aliens that rescued the stag from the Pleistocene era brought him to Rose City in our era for a reason. They must have known someone with your powers would connect with him, and that he would mentor you and prepare you to save the planet. Eh, it's probably just a big series of coincidences. Oh, brother. Max didn't take credit for it. Not once. He insisted it was a team effort. Oh, and one last thing before I sign off for now. I kept my word and turned Dad over to the authorities. I maintained the force field around him. I had to travel all the way to the island with him. He would not shut up the entire trip, so I thickened the force field and muted him for a while. It was relaxing. Now that Dad is out of commission, do you think you could come out of the journal? I know he usually finds a way to escape, but maybe I can fix that. I'll keep you posted, but trust me, I'll keep you safe. I miss you, Mom. I love you. Okay, on that note, I gotta go. Tammy and I are moving into our own place in a couple of weeks, so helping her pack is taking up all my free time. Well, that and meeting with lawyers to talk about Dad's company, that's gonna be so boring. Whatever. Bye. Insert bear hug here. Love, Linus. In this episode of Second Fiddles, Linus is voiced by Alex Sinecropi, Max is voiced by Matt Johnson, Tammy is voiced by Liz Thompson, Sophia is voiced by Robin Rimey, Ren is voiced by Christy Barkin, Elijah is voiced by Nick Bissett, Cassie is voiced by Tatiana Reed, The Threat is voiced by Matt Johnson, The Wall Crawler is voiced by Greg Maddock, Chameleon is voiced by Elena Langan and Matt Johnson, Gail is voiced by Betsy Harris, Krampus is voiced by Gwen Brown, Retcon is voiced by Mia Canali, and MacGuffin is voiced by John Pupo. Whew, that was a lot of people. Tune in next time for the Season 3 finale of Second Fiddles. Woohoo! Feel free to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Second Fiddles Podcast, Tumblr at Second Fiddles, and Twitter at Second Fiddles spelled 2ND Fiddles. Transcripts of all of our episodes can be found at our website, secondfiddlespodcast.com. Thanks for listening!